I'm sitting here with Chris Smith. Chris is one of the key figures in American sociology and I thought I would take a few moments to ask him about critical realism and why critical realism is important. Chris, how did you come to critical realism? Okay, so the way I got into critical realism was, uh, the timing was about 2003, 2004. I started off my career doing historically oriented case study work uh, on religious movements, political movements. Then I moved to a department that was pretty driven by positivist meta-theory, even though nobody really paid attention to meta-theory. That's what was actually happening. Positivism dominated, and it was a very quantitatively oriented department. Great department. I learned a lot. I loved the place, but that was what was running there. And um, I was also personally very interested in social constructionism, as a lot of uh, American sociologists are. So. Um, I had spent much of my career sort of wrestling through history, case studies, uh, surveys, interviews as methods, quantitative sociology, uh, postmodernism, social constructionism, how all this fits together into a coherent account. With all of it, I appreciated parts of it, but also felt uneasy about some other parts of it. I also have a very interest in philosophy, so uh, was all along reading philosophy of social science, epistemology, lots of things. Um, and so I, had, I wasn't content with what I was doing and what a lot of people around me were doing. I thought sociology was important and valuable, but I, wasn't cont I didn't feel like we've got it. I some, there was some discontent. In the early 2000s, I wrote a book called Moral Believing Animals. and um, yeah, there's a chapter in there about narratives, and I took a very strong uh, con social constructionist line. And by the end of the chapter, I realized I was driving my readers over the cliff of a kind of a absolute relativism of radi radical social constructionism. So I realized uh, there, I had a problem that I had not resolved. And though in that book, I just said, look, we can't go there, and there's got to be some alternative possibilities. And I listed some, of which one was critical realism, about which I knew very little. Turned out that one of the reviewers of that book for Oxford University Press was uh, Doug Porpora, and he, uh, I didn't know it at the time, but he, in his anonymous review, said, you might want to read some Maggie Archer, realist social theory, etc. So, okay. So that was my introduction to critical realism as a philosophy. I had maybe heard of Roy Bashkar, but didn't really know or uh, care about it that much. Um, but I had a problem, and what I discovered in the early 2000s was that critical realism was the effective resolution of that problem. It, it answered my questions, it, was, it tied up loose ends, it put pieces together that I didn't know how to previously put together. Not, by, not in the sense of uh, acting as some kind of a comprehensive ideological new religion that I devoted myself to and drank the Kool-Aid, but in the sense of critical realism is a very carefully thought through, well-grounded, and internally coherent sort of approach to things that explains why the things we do that are good are good, why we should avoid the things we do that are problematic, and it gave a conceptual framework and a language and a vocabulary to make the kind of distinctions that really move things forward and explain what's valuable in what we do and what's problematic. And so from there, I read a lot of, uh, I didn't start off with Roy Bashkar, I read a lot of Margaret Archer, Andrew Collier, Andrew Sayer, and then eventually, um, and Doug Porpora, and, uh, and then Roy Bashkar. And it just, it, it wasn't that, I, again, that I had a conversion to it, it's just, it finally persuaded me, no, this is the right meta-philosophy, the meta-theory of, to ground sociology in, or to frame sociology in as opposed to positivist empiricism, postmodern deconstructionism, or, uh, or even sort of hermeneutical interpretivism, which I'm very friendly to, but I always thought it was inadequate, or at least some versions of it were inadequate to simply say, well, we're here to understand the meanings of actors. Now, that's great, that's crucial, that's important, but to what end? It seemed to me we're here to understand that in order to explain something, in order to get at the causal reasons why the world operates the way it does. And so 
uh, hermeneutics was necessary, but it, I, it struck me that many versions of it in sociology were underachieving. So critical realism put all that together, and I've since just been um, learning more about it, uh, trying to think through more intentionally and self-consciously how to revise the work I do to be informed by it. Even if you learn a meta theory, it doesn't mean you're automatically going to do that work because we've all been formed by our graduate programs and our colleagues and the imperatives of journals and so on. So it's a long learning and unlearning process to try to figure out how to do sociology differently. Uh, critical realism really ends up requiring something quite different. So Chris, over the past couple of years, your work has been focused on questions of personhood and human flourishing. I, I was hoping you could say a few words about how critical realism has helped you think through these issues. I have, um, in the last years, been especially focused on the question of human personhood, what is a person, human motivations. Um, I use the word person instead of individual intentionally. I think the question of uh, human personhood is central to everything, pretty much. It's central to um, politics, economics, a sense of a good life, a sense of leading, leading a meaningful life. I also think sociologically, getting personhood right is essential for offering a good explanation for anything. No, no matter what we're trying to explain in human social life, if we don't have the right account, either implicit or explicit, of what a human person is and what persons are, we're going to get it wrong. I think that because I believe um, that human persons are the key sort of causal actors in human social life, uh, not cultures, not institutions, not genes, not emotions. All those things are important, but the organizing center and principle and level of getting it right is human persons as um, moral, believing, self-interested, whatever they are, actors in the world. But critical realism doesn't leave me with a kind of a methodological individualism because the idea of a stratified, complex, structured universe in which emergence happens and downward causation happens enables me to locate persons in a complex scheme of reality where uh, from a persons are emergent from bodies in their interaction with each other and in the material world. And social relations, dynamic structures and institutions are emergent from persons interacting. And to me, that critical realism right there has given us the framework for why sociology exists. Because the world isn't just a bunch of individuals doing their thing. The world is also individuals doing their thing, giving rise to new entities and powers at the level of the social that act causally back down on person. So that's the whole sort of dialectical or dynamic upward and downward movement of causation. It requires critical realism though to get that picture right. Otherwise we get lost in other languages that have liabilities and problems built into them in my view. So. Uh, the other reason I think uh, thinking carefully about the nature of human personhood is crucial is uh, it enables us to bring back together analytical, descriptive, scientific questions about how and why social life works the way it does with normative and moral and political questions about what is a good life, what should a good society look like, what do we mean by justice, uh, how should I live? Uh, unfortunately, with the general fragmentation of modernity and the, and the specialization of, uh, and breakdown intellectually in certain ways of higher education and, and science, these questions are separated. Sociologists live their lives in just sort of analytical science mode. Uh, and then they go home and act like persons at home or moral beings. When in fact, our, all of our social science is morally motivated and informed. And so, but again, this gets back to one of the commitments of critical realism. We live in a, it's differentiated, it's complex, it's stratified, but ultimately we live in a single reality. And our knowledge should be interested in understanding not just the pieces, of, but the totality and the hanging togetherness and the interrelatedness of all the pieces of reality. So my moral and normative questions and political questions shouldn't be radically divorced and incoherent and contradictory with the kind of sociology I do. And if we want, I just think the best way theoretically, intellectually, 
to try to pull those pieces together coherently is to think about the nature of us, ourselves, human persons. I don't mean that in a radically anthropocentric way, like, well, we don't care about animals or the environment. Of course not. When, the minute, minute we start thinking about personhood, we start thinking about other goods, how do we relate to the material environment and other animals and the, and the cosmos and the climate and everything else? But, so I just, I really think for many, many reasons, the best way to get at what's wrong with sociology is to critique its approach to individuals or social actors or however it's conceived and, recon and think more clearly about persons as persons. And then the best way to do constructive analysis and living decent lives in the world is to start off by thinking about what is a person. What is it that bothers you about American sociology as it is now? So, uh, when one becomes a critical realist and starts to talk about it with other people, one quickly runs up against, uh, oftentimes, not entirely, but oftentimes a kind of a dismissive, impatient attitude about it. Like, why do we need all this ontological baggage? Or, what? I'm not a philosopher, I'm a sociologist. Or, uh, uh, or just, we don't need, we need, we should strip down as few as possible assumptions we make about anything. And whereas critical realism builds up a, a pretty complex, sophisticated view of everything. Uh, so, what do I say in response to that? Well, first of all, I don't think sociology is, as it's originally launched, as what got me into it, has to do with just counting things and correlating things. I mean, that's completely boring and uninteresting and, and, and in some sense dehumanizing, I would say. Sociology is trying to understand what are the big changes that go on in the world? How do things work that affect real people's lives? And so in some sense, I, I think sociologists should be intellectuals of a certain kind and not just technicians, not just methodological technicians that collect data and report finding. We're, we should be thoughtful, reflective, big picture thinkers that try to put big pieces together. This is what Weber, Marx, Durkheim, all the people that launched our discipline were doing, however well or not they did it, this, they were intellectuals. And for us to sort of prescind from that and, and more modestly say, I don't want to think about things. And so in American sociology, for example, there's a strong influence of pragmatism. And uh, I'm friendly to pragmatism in certain ways, and critical realism has, a, has some resonance with parts of pragmatism. But I found a lot of pragmatists to be essentially anti-intellectual. I say, well, what do you think about, how do you think the world is put together? What are the, what are the entities we're even talking about? And the answer is, I don't think about that. We don't need to think about that. Just, you have an immediate question, just answer that and as best you can, and that's all we, you need to do. Ooh. And then we turn around and tell our undergrads, we, we want to form you into critical thinkers. We want to form, we want to expand your intellectual horizons. We want to, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not criticizing pragmatism wholesale. I'm just saying I, I see tendencies of influences of other real operative meta theories that turn us into, we don't want to think about things. And I think that's pernicious. I think it's just pernicious in many ways. Positivism um, does have a, an admitted ontology, philosophy of the world, and how things operate in epistemology, which others have reflected on. And most American sociologists who are influenced by positivism don't know all what's running in the background of philosophy. They just, in, they're essentially just influenced by something they don't understand. But also, I find positivism has a certain anti-intellectual, anti-theoretical uh, product that it produces, basically. It's just, it's very narrow in what it can look at. It's very narrow in what it'll count as evidence that can persuade us of anything. And so again, positivism doesn't turn us into human knowers who are broadly and expansively trying to understand the world and our own lives in them and how, how we might change things and so on. It, it's fundamentally turns out to be anti-intellectual in my view and I just I just think that's morally reprehensible for pe for intellectuals and scholars and higher education with the kind of world we live in the kind of responsibilities we have with our students and the whole world to have philosophy as a social science that turn us into anti-intellectuals uh, one final question and it's a big question uh, what would the ideal sociologist look like for you 
It's not that I want critical realism to take over and become sort of a uniform doctrine for everybody. I'm, a, I'm actually a pluralist, and I think that we operate best when different points of views really hash it out with each other, really hammer things out, and um, butt their heads against each other in good virtuous arguments, not destructive arguments. So I'm happy to have people that are not critical realists, but what I'm, what I'm unhappy about is when sociologists don't want to think about these things. They don't want to acknowledge their real philosophical commitments that are running in the background that they pretend don't exist. I don't, what I'm not happy about are scholars and colleagues who um, are running with completely internally incoherent and inconsistent approaches and philosophies that they, you know, if you really spell them out, it just doesn't add up. Uh, I think we can do better than that. So I would like it if, if, if sociologists would more learn about and own up to the meta theories and philosophies that are informing the kind of work we do and really work, hash out together, why are these things good? Why are they bad? When do they work? When do they not work? What are the strengths of some over others? And um, let's own up to our commitments and be intellectually responsible rather than just putting aside all sorts of things that nevertheless have causal power on the kind of work we do. We just want to acknowledge it. So. That's, that's the kind of direction I would like to see more explicit, engaged, thoughtful uh, contextualization of our work, justification of our work, and then presumably that would improve our work.